Yeah, we back with another interesting video. Now today, not wasting no time, let's get straight into it. We're going to talk about Tariq Nasheed's silence on American foreign policy. And not only that, we're going to talk about the real reason why Pan-Africanism doesn't work and hasn't worked. Before we jump into the article from Al Jazeera, take a look up on the screen. We got a gentleman by the name of General Langley. Now, in case you didn't know, he recently became the first black man in America to become a four-star general in the Marines. Now, going back to what I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to play a clip and I'm going to show you why Pan-Africanism hasn't worked. And then after that, I'm going to read an article from Al Jazeera and we're going to analyze it. Let's go. How many Africans has the United States military trained and equipped? Congressman, I don't have that, that figure. I can get that figure for the you. Ballpark. Though. Just, you know, how many? Uh, Congressman, it would be a wild, it would be a wild guess, right? Seems like something we should know, right? Over the years, um, we have trained a substantial number, especially in uh, the Gulf of Guinea uh, states. Um, uh, but in, including like more than um, ten thousand. It is more than ten thousand. More than fifty thousand. I say we're, we're reaching around fifty thousand okay. at least. And, and and what percentage of the people we've trained? end up participating in insurrections or coups against their own government? Very small number, Congressman, very small number. So go ahead and throw up that image. This is uh, Colonel Mamade Dumbuya, and this is a photo of, of him. Did we train and equip him in Guinea? Uh, by name, I, I cannot identify that. Well, well, that guy in the middle with the big red hat, Colonel Mamade Dumbuya, that, that's him with a bunch of U.S. service members outside of our embassy. And just months after this photo was taken in 2021, he led a coup in Guinea and, and threw out the, the leader. Core values is what we start off with in IMA pro programs. Do we, we share stick core values with Colonel Dumbuya? Core values. I will repeat that. Core values. Know, respect for humanity. Do we, do we share those values with Colonel Dumbuya? Absolutely. In our, in our curriculum. He led a coup. We do. Holistically, we teach whole uh, uh, you know, core values uh, with a respect for civilian governance, apolitical, and that's what sticks across a, a high, very high percentage in the 90, 90 over but not 90 everybody, nine percentile. Right? But not everybody. And and when it, I wonder how many people it takes to to plan a coup. I mean, initially you didn't know how many we trained and equipped. Then you said it was 1%. You had no base, basis for that 1% number because there's no data set you tracked. Mr. Chairman, I seek to, uh, unanimous consent to enter into the record. Another U.S. trained stole, soldier stages a coup in West Africa by the intercept. Without objection, so ordered. And I, I further seek unanimous consent to enter into the record. U.S. forces trained the Guinean colonel behind the recent coup in West African country, and this is regard to Guinea. Without objection, so ordered. So I guess the, the question is, why should U.S. taxpayers be paying to train people who then lead coups in Africa? Congressman, our curriculum harvests core values and also uh, to, uh, to be able to embolden these countries for a representative democracy. But, but, but General, that democracy isn't what emerges. The problem is, I know you, you may have great confidence in what you're teaching, but when two governments have been overthrown, I guess, how many governments have to be overthrown by people we train before you sort of get the message that our core values might not be sticking with everyone? Is it five countries? Ten? We'll, we'll continue with our persistence in assuring but do you think it's that working? they harbor... They, that they harbor democratic norms, you, democratic values. Just a moment ago, you said, you said we shared core values with Colonel Dembuya. You said, you said that just moments ago in response to my question, and his core value seems to be leading a coup. All right, we back. Now, before we jump into the latest article coming out of Al Jazeera talking about how Vice President Kamala Harris went over to the African continent to boost ties between the continent and the American government. Now, y'all remember back when Joe Biden was running for president? Now, in typical fashion, as we already know, Whenever the election season comes around, they always float around, oh, the first black this person, the first black this, the first black vice president, the first black secretary of defense. They start throwing all these first blacks around to get black people to the polls and to vote for the politician that they got for election. And of course, the big one that they pulled out was Vice President Kamala Harris, but it wasn't only her. As many of you guys already know, the secretary of defense is a black man by the name of Lloyd Austin. I believe he's a retired general in the American military. 
And then also they were floating around. They were talking about they're gonna give a black man the position of the CIA director. Man. They were talking big shit. <laughs> they were talking big shit. In fact, take a look up on the screen. You'll see it reads Biden considers Daryl Blocker for a CIA director, which could make the former station chief and 32 year intelligence veteran the first black person in the top job. Bro, I'm telling you, every election season, they're pulling out the first black, first black, first black, first black. Cause they want y'all at them polls, bro. Bro, they be pulling out all the tricks out the bag, bro. Now, unfortunately for that brother, he didn't get the job. But going back to what I said about why Pan Africanism doesn't work, let's go into the uh, let's go to the Wikipedia page of CIA agent Daryl Blocker. As we can see, take a look up on the screen. Daryl Blocker is a former American intelligence officer who served for 28 years with the CIA. He held prominent positions, including deputy director of the Counterterrorism Center, chief of Africa Division. Okay, that's all I need to hear. All right, let's let's move on. Now, when it came to the whole Daryl Blocker situation, they were throwing that out because they needed a black man to come to the polls. So they were dangling that, you know, in front of black men like, hey, bro, don't you want to work for the white man? You know what I'm saying? Don't you want to be the white man? You know what I'm saying? Going to Africa, going to, you know, West Africa and top of the government, bro. So anyways, so unfortunately for that brother, he didn't get the job, but they did get the position of secretary of defense to a black man by the name of Lloyd Austin. Take a look up on the screen. As you can see, General Lloyd Austin has been in that position since January 22nd, 2021. United States Department of Defense, Office of the Secretary of Defense, meaning that Tariq Nasheed, this is the real black Americans right here. You heard? This is the real black Americans, Tariq. These the real steppers, okay? These are the real steppers. These brothers right here, they're going to step for American imperialism. You know what I'm saying? They're going to step. They're going to they gonna ride down for American imperialism, bro. They're going to they gonna shoot the block up for American imperialism. That little shit you doing on the internet, bro, sitting in your basement, you know, while, while your wife upstairs breastfeeding, that ain't nothing. You sitting in your mansion all comfortable, you know, with your feet, with your feet kicked up, you ain't doing shit, bro. <laughs> You ain't doing shit. And this is the reason why Pan-Africanism doesn't work because we got some real, we got black men out here that's really steppers for that American flag. You see, I'm not worried about Tariq Nasheed and his little, you know, his little crowd of imbeciles. They ain't doing shit. They don't got no power. They ain't gonna step, they ain't gonna do nothing. They ain't gonna step for even their own damn family, bro. I'm telling you, when the cops come, they gonna run. They gonna run down. They gonna put their hand behind their back, get on the damn ground. So at the end of the day, these is the real steppers right here. These are the ones that Tariq Nasheed never talks about. He'll talk about we invented hip hop and all this shit and they copy our swag, but he don't want to talk about them steppers that's going around the world participating in operations to maintain U.S. supremacy around the globe. He don't want to talk about those steppers, though. He don't want to talk about those because, like I said, Tariq is a joke, man. Tariq is a joke. He going to talk about the quote unquote black immigrants coming to the United States to, to undermine them. Oh, they gonna, they gonna undermine our claim for reparations. Bro, you undermining whole governments out here, bro. <laughs> You, you undermine the whole governments, bro. And you never acknowledge that. You never talk about the real steppers. The real the real black American steppers that's going around the globe doing their thing. You never talk about those because then your narrative will fall apart in five in 2.5 seconds. Now, first things first, man. Before we get back into it. Before we get into the article, man. We got to understand. This right here is the colonial tactic that has been used going back centuries, bro. If you go into my playlist section, you see I have a large library of historical content. Videos on historical content. If you watch my latest series entitled... The Memoirs of Jean-Jacques Dessalines Secretary, written by Dessalines' right-hand man, Juan Thonet, released in the year 1804. During the Haitian Revolution, there was a black man, a black general, who fought in Toussaint Louverture's army. He goes by the name of General La Plume. After Toussaint was arrested in the year 1802, the French landed, and La Plume switched allegiance to the French. And he was fighting against the same brothers he was riding down with and riding with just years prior. And towards the end of the war, when the writing was on the wall, La Plume... Man, he hopped on the ship, he went to France. And his descendants are probably still alive right now in France, still to this day. Who knows? But yeah, man, I mean, this is nothing new, bro. That's the real reason why Pan-Africanism doesn't work, because it's always going to be some black men up in the mix that, unfortunately, they're going to be used as weapons or tools to undermine the operation of another group of black men. I mean, it is what it is, bro. That's the real reason why Pan-Africanism doesn't work. All that nonsense that Tarina Sheet talk about, bro, stop it, bro. Stop it. When it comes to Tarina Sheet, it's all about who could tell the best joke. He was talking about hairlines and shit like that. I'm really talking about intelligent shit on my channel. So at the end of the day, bro. Tariq, talk about the real steppers. Talk about the real black Americans that's really banging for that flag for real, for real. Talk about talk about those brothers, man. But you don't. But you can't because then it would undermine your whole narrative. It would undermine the whole narrative. Now, I just want to put out the disclaimer that I do not, I'm not using this video to attack any of the brothers that's in the United States government. General Lloyd Austin, General Langley, a CIA agent Daryl Blocker. I don't have no problem. I don't have no issue. I'm addressing a gentleman by the name of Tariq Nasheed. Listen, brothers, I know y'all some gangsters. I know y'all some gangsters. And I'm just here to let you know. I don't want no problems, bro. I don't want no problems. This is between me and Tariq Nasheed. That's all. Because Tariq, I know Tariq ain't about shit. But y'all boys, I know y'all really about that life. I know y'all really about that life, and I respect y'all. I don't want no beef because I know y'all the real gangsters. Anyways, let's get into it. 
Now, after this video, I don't want to hear anything about Tariq and she talking about what a black immigrant coming over here to do and undermine this and undermine that. Listen, I don't know any black immigrant anywhere training 100,000 soldiers, 50,000 soldiers, toppling whole governments talking about, bro. And listen, General Langley, he was committed to the company lines. You heard him. He was like, listen, democratic governance, democratic rule. We just, we, we committed to democracy, apolitical, democracy, democratic governance, democratic governments, our core values of democratic governance, bro. General Langley, <laughs> listen. General Langley is committed and he's representing for the American flag. That shit Tarina she be doing, that's child's play. That's child's play. That's juvenile bullshit. But see, you would never find somebody like General Langley associating with someone like Tariq Nasheed or any 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 of his political ideologies because come on man. Anyways, come on man. We already know. Like I said, bro, the bozos of society gonna gravitate to Tariq Nasheed, bro. The bozos of society, the clowns of society. Straight up. Anyways, let's continue. I just wanna put up on the screen. General Dambuya. This is who they were talking about that General Langley had, you know, assisted in Guinea. You know, the, the secret operations. That, that's what they were talking about. Let's look at uh, General Dambuya. Now, listen, brothers, like I mentioned in previous videos, I don't like this. I don't like it. Our powerful man at the top, it can't be looking like this. It can't be looking like this, bro. It don't, it don't be making sense like this. You don't see it in any other group, bro. You don't see it in any other group. You're not going to see no no high-powered Chinese man with some, some women of other races, bro. I'm telling you, every high-powered man, the captains of industry, the presidents, at the top, it's not supposed to look like this, bro. At the top, it's supposed to be your own people. For the average, regular, everyday person, that's fine. But the heads of state, nah, bro. Chinese president gonna come out with a Chinese wife. American president gonna come out with a white wife. French president gonna come out with a French wife. But it all makes sense because this guy was trained by the steppers in Washington. So they obviously seen something in him that they liked. But you'll never hear Tariq Nasheed cover these stories on his channel because then it would undermine his narrative. He'll never cover these stories on his channel where the Malian government, as well as the government of Burkina Faso, they kicked out the French military, banned the French media, kicked out all French NGOs, kicked out the French ambassador. He'll never cover those stories because then it will undermine his narrative that, oh, the non-FBAs, they don't fight against the quote-unquote white supremacy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, usually I like to crack jokes on Tariq Nasheed, but today we're going we gonna to keep it educational. And I also want to say the current presidents of Mali and Burkina Faso, I believe one of them is like 34 years old. Dude's only a few years older than me. And the other one is like, what, 39, 40 years old? And both of those brothers are interacting with world powers, engaged in international diplomacy, doing international trade, commerce, business, controlling militaries, governing countries, and having a battle against Western interference in politics because both of those brothers have gave the middle finger to the Western powers. Much respect to General Goita and General Ibrahim Traore. Yo, Tariq Nishi, you don't know shit about geopolitics, bro. You should just delete your YouTube channel, bro. You don't know shit about shit. And I also want to say the young brother who's 34 years old, he came into power like less than six months ago because the previous guy that came into power was also an agent of Washington. So he had to get him up out of there because around the same time that the other brother with the white wife came into power in Guinea, there was another overthrow in Burkina Faso. And then came to power was this guy named Paul Damiba and he was an agent of Washington. So then the young brother, Ibrahim Traore, a few months ago had to get him up out of there, move him out the way. And that's when they kicked out the French, kicked out the French military, banned the French media, kicked out the French ambassador, all that. And since Tariq Nasheed loves to talk about black immigrants coming to America to undermine him, take a look up on the screen. You'll see this was introduced by a black man, a black politician by the name of Gregory Meeks. And as you can see, it says the Countering Malign Russian Activities in Africa Act. Now you can Google this and do your own independent research, but from my analysis, this seems like a response to the governments, especially in West Africa, that have been, like I said, giving the middle finger to the Western powers. And when you give the middle finger to the Western powers, we're not talking about just the United States. We're talking about one of the United States' close homeboys, the French. So whenever the French run into a roadblock in Africa, they know most times, nine times out of 10, they could call upon Uncle Sam and he gonna, you know, come and send the shooters in assistance. So. We already know this. Anyways, let's continue. Now, going back to what I said previously about why Pan-Africanism doesn't work. The true reason why Pan-Africanism doesn't work. It's not because black immigrants coming to America and undermining FBA. It's because we have black men operating at high levels of government that have pledged allegiance to United States imperialism. I mean, at the end of the day, you work for the United States government. You have no choice. You cannot work for a foreign adversary. At the end of the day, you got to represent your government. But unfortunately for us who have an international mindset, we have to understand and come to terms with the fact that on an international level, the black man's interests, the black man's aspirations, they stand opposed to the interests of the white man. They stand opposed to the interests of the white male. We have to come to terms with that. And we have to come to terms with the fact that we have our own, I don't want to call them brothers, but like I said, I got respect for them boys. I don't want no problems. <laughs> I don't want no problems. But we got a lot of our brothers who, at the end of the day, their agenda is not on a Pan-Africanist agenda. Tariq she loves to point the finger and talk about the quote-unquote tribalism in Africa. Tariq she loves talking about how, oh, it's so much tribalism in Africa, but he never points the finger at American foreign policy and the black men that carry it out. Because going back to that bill that I talked about, the Counter-Russian Activities in Africa Act, that was introduced by a black man by the name of Gregory Meeks. 
But Tariq Nasheed would never talk about this though. He would talk about somebody on Twitter, a tweet he seen on Twitter, somebody on Clubhouse, somebody on Twitter Space said this, some some random Somalian said this. But he'll never talk about he'll never talk about this side of the game though. The real roadblocks to Pan-Africanism, the real obstacles in the way of Pan-Africanism. And Tariq Nasheed talk about you should be grateful and we did this, we built this, and and we built this country. Yes, you built. You built this empire that now stretches its tentacles around the globe. And now look at the operations that it carries out. Thank you. Thank you for building it. Thank you. Thank you. Now that you built it, it's kind of like artificial intelligence, right? The artificial intelligence has now become aware and now you can no longer control it. You can't control it. You built it, but now you cannot control it from going over to West Africa and toppling the governments. You can't control it from going over to Haiti and knocking off the president. You can't control it no more. So you bragging about you built it, but can you please get it under control? Tariq, that's all I'm asking from one black man to another. Can you please get it under control? Now that you built it, can you please get it under control? So black men around the world can, you know, have some peace and quiet for a little bit. Have some stability and tranquility for five seconds. Now, anyways, let's get into the article from Al Jazeera. And it's so ironic because if y'all remember, I dropped a video the other day entitled The Reason Why Tariq Nasheed Is Wrong, The Duality of Politics, The Dual Nature of Politics. And in that video, I was responding to a comment in my comment section from a Tarita Sheet supporter who said something about, I forget which video it was, he was responding to a video I made about the Burner Boy situation. And he was talking about how the FBA crowd, the FBA conglomerate should focus on the domestic politics and they shouldn't focus on international affairs. And because unfortunately, many of these guys don't really have any firm understanding of geopolitics, they don't even understand that that's impossible because you already have people within your group that are going around the world involving themselves in the politics of other nations. But you're, but you're telling me in my comment section trying to explain to me that somehow Tariq Nasheed makes a good point. Man, stop it, bro. Stop it. Tariq Nasheed's point does not make any sense in any on any level, domestically, internationally, geopolitically, economically. It makes no sense because it's not rooted in reality. It's just some random old head sitting in his goddamn basement on a Sunday night talking shit like our uncles and our fucking granddaddies and shit like that. But unfortunately, nobody looked at our, our grandfather or our uncle, you know, rambling drunk on a Sunday night as some major geopolitical analysis. We were just like, you know, that's the old head right there talking his shit. Shout out to grandpa. That's all. But y'all be taking him seriously and following him and buying his t-shirts and... Anyways, I don't want to stand it. Let's jump into the article from Al Jazeera. As you can see, it says, take a look up on the screen, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris in Africa to boost ties. A week-long tour of the continent comes at a time when the U.S. is seeking to counter the influence of Russia and China. As you already know, I've already explained this in my previous videos. Nations do not engage in charity. If you see them traveling to a part of the world, it's to protect their interests, whatever those may be, political or economic, most likely. And you can go online and you can read the article for yourself, but in summary, the article discusses the growing competition between the United States and Russia on the African continent and how it's leading to a, a new Cold War. Well, the Cold War never really stopped. You know, sometimes it heats up, sometimes it cools down, but to be honest, it's still going on, man. The competition, it never stops. The article highlights some of the recent developments in Africa that demonstrate the growing Russian presence. You know, bro, you know, that's the boogeyman right now. Way back when we were younger, it was Afghanistan, Iran, the Middle East. Now it's Russia. We back to Russia, 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 bro. Cold War back again, bro. They talk about China investing money into infrastructure projects, things like that. And I did a video on that as well. There was recently the U.S. Africa Summit where I believe it was, what, $50 billion that was pledged to the nations on the continent. So the U.S. is trying to battle for power and influence on the continent, bro. They don't want to see the Chinese and the Russians start flexing their muscle. That's all. And for those of y'all who haven't seen it, I dropped a video the other day entitled The Dark Side of Democracy, Are Black Men Ready for Power? And I think that video goes well with this one. So when you're done with this one, go check out that one. Anyways, bro, it's your boy Nevercard Desolene back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion I left on a horse and came back in that ass And I left with abundance and came back to famine We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping Look how the mighty have fallen Used to be running, now we be walking When you be cooning, that's when they applauded Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter Gotta come up in this shit, they stuck in the mix Really, my heart, it be breaking That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business Pass it down in generation Talking about money and power and building a nation That's a deadly combination Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus Falsifying information no, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They make a no hour with it, wedge. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be charged that I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murk me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their face